the agenda for today. Uh, we're really going to go through um, some of the basics, uh, important things, all relating to, to vias and the quality and the reliability of vias. So why do vias matter? Well, so vias connect all your nets and when a via fails, uh, you know, basically your board doesn't work, even if it's one via. So that uh, I think is enough said on that, to be honest, but you can have all sorts of electrical issues with inappropriately designed vias, um, getting, you know, signal reflections and you can have issues with, you know, reliability, overheating, uh, and then, as you guys mentioned, uh, having, uh, you know, really controlling your electrical properties or your impedances are important. So this is just a general slide. Uh, I don't recommend having every via structure in one circuit board, but this just illustrates the different types of via structures. So a through hole, of course, blind vias from one to two or from one to three is possible. Buried vias, you can't see them from the outside. They're inside your board, which means they're going to be multiple laminations. And then stack vias or staggered vias. Staggered vias are more reliable. Um, and but stack vias, you know, in consumer are de is definitely okay as well. So calculating your pad size uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, however, I'd like to say you should really consider what are the tolerances of the fab shop that you're using. And if you don't know which fab shop you're using, then how do you know what design, you know, whether you design something that is good for them? Uh, every fab shop has different tolerances um, it, when it comes to this, because all the tolerances really come together here. Uh, not just mechanical drill or laser drill machine tolerances, but material movement as well. Uh, and how accurately all of those are controlled. And so it seems straightforward, but it, it actually incorporates a lot of things. So you always wanna make sure you have sufficient pad dimensions. So what what is the minimum pad you can design with? And you have to think about your applications and what kind of, hole it is, if it's a component hole that's different and has, you should have larger vias and larger pads versus if it's just a microvia, through hole microvia for connection purpose. And then if it's a through hole microvia for space or aerospace or military application that has more spacing requirements, a bigger pad and a bigger angular ring requirement than if it's class two. So if if you're if it's a class two automotive and you want to follow guidelines for reliability for there, you shouldn't go with the minimum that your board fabricator can do. You should go with the most reliable uh, for your end application. But the idea is the same that you know we're going to have a finished hole size. It's going to which is drilled plus plating. So we drill bigger than the whole size you specify, because that's what you specify, most fabricators take that as a finished whole size. So we'll drill a little bit bigger and we'll plate in the hole, plate in the via. Before we plate, we clean the via and also perform any etch back requirements, which we'll talk about later. And we also, and then after that all is done, that is your finished annular ring. And you have to take into account the tolerances that I was mentioning. And some of the some of those are listed in the IPC spec, but really I would talk to your fabricator. I think the IPC spec is a little outdated at this point. So for class two, class three, your annular ring requirements are different. Uh, and for because you know the final spec calls for some a a, a different. Uh, number that we have to meet. It's a different requirement. So for class three, you always want larger pad sizes or larger annular rings versus class two. And it's also different for mechanical vias versus laser drill microvias. And at the end of the day, a laser drill microvia, let's say on the outer layer, most probably will get filled. So 
the annular ring is a little bit less important on a micro via, laser drilled microvia than it is on a mechanical through the whole via. Aspect ratio plays a very important role on reliability. You know, your aspect ratio um, is, if it's not within the right range, then you're gonna have a problem with uh, plating. And, the, you know, if you don't have proper plating, that's where the issues start. So you don't want any um, cracks or, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of quality defects and holes, but you don't want any voiding and you want, especially in laser drills, you want to possibly penetrate the copper layer below if um, if that if that's possible in your design. And then uh, our copper fill plate tanks will plate from the bottom up to make sure there's a good connection there at the bottom of the laser drill via. So here, uh, you know, the minimum plating thickness for class two is eight tenths, for class three it's one. So we tend to plate a little bit more than the minimum 